Hello everyone and welcome to my legendary campaign for the Vampire Counts. This starter guide will go over information and details to help you in total domination of the old world. Vampire Counts have a very unique strategy for a legendary campaign and you can actually use that in that huge amount of negative public order to your advantage. For our generals we have both von Kostein and Heinrich Kemmler. Now normally I would suggest the leader with the that gives you the plus five percent movement speed but for Manfred von Kastein, you can acquire him once you conquer all of Sylvania, both Eastern and Western Sylvania. The big advantage he has is his Vargolf, but um, essentially those two other units that he has are very early game units which are very expendable. The Vargolf is probably the most important one because you can destroy vampire lords very easily in the early. However, getting Heinrich Kemmler is a pretty big deal as well because that minus 15% raise dead cost. It's a faction effect. So basically every single one of your armies gets a cheaper raise dead cost. Now if you focus down your campaign skills for your general and you go down the blue lead, blue campaign skills all the way to the end, you get another per, a discount for minus 50% off for raise dead. So basically you can raise uh, super armies of like undead against your enemies and it can be proven very effective. His hex rates and Karen rates are pretty good for the early game but they're not as powerful as the Vargolf but he's a much general to pick because you would need a necromancer's library to actually get Kemmler. And by turn 10, about turn 8 to 10 you can get Manfred von Kastein and secure Sylvania. And right at the beginning here, I suggest getting the gold mine as quickly as possible, and be ready to destroy that barracks. Get yourself a general with some good starting, with some decent stats. If you have bad stats, just reload the game and just start again. Give him three skeleton warriors to your secondary army, and attack the Temple Hoffs army that's right on your border. I wouldn't suggest raising the dead, because you might convince the AI to actually retreat. And honestly, this battle isn't really that hard. You don't want the enemy to retreat back to Templehof. You want to play this one, and you want to do as much damage as possible. Well, sometimes it's very random, of like even if you eliminate the, the entire army, they, there might be some survivors. But this is a very basic battle. Simply use your expendable units to hold the front line, flank around with your hex rates to like destroy the enemy blob. I would f and focus your Cairn rates on the enemy's vampire lord general. They're not going to kill him. They're not that po the Cairn rates are not that powerful. However, your hex rates will do work on the enemy's blob. They will slaughter those zombies and skeleton wars no problem. Continue using your dire wolves and your soldiers to flank as much as possible and try to destroy the enemy's blob. I wouldn't focus your entire army on the enemy general because the Vampire Lord is just simply very tanky. Use Heinrich Kemmler to like maybe heal some of your troops and just continue destroying the enemy's army and your hex rates will do work. Once you achieve victory in that battle you can now have to be very careful with your movements here. With the Templehof army on your border like decimated probably, sometimes the, ju the Vampire Lord might get away Go ahead and raise the dead, and get ready for your invasion to the north. Focus on leadership skills as f soon as possible, because this strategy involves in taking two provinces next to you, heading north to Bekafen and heading west to the Moot. You want to get the guild, the vampire corruption expansion levels. You want to get that instead of like focusing like on leadership or your personal skills at the start because the vampire corruption is very weak in the early game. You got to build like crypts and that involves dark magic and that involves a lot of money. And you can you can corrupt the like lands near you in about less than turn 30 even before that. Focus on the economic skills for the vampire counts so you get even more vampire corruption spreading across the land because that is essentially how you're going to counter legendary difficulty and that huge um, negative public order, even though you can take advantage of that. When you're moving Heinrich's army close to Eschen, 
be sure to bring your secondary army in range. You'll have they'll have like three skeleton warriors in that unit, and that's fine. Continue raising dead and assault the village, and you should have no problem. Templehof will notice that your army is on the move, so you have so essentially you essentially wiped out their garrison that was in Templehof. Be very careful at this stage because we you still want to continue like blitzkrieging through the enemy's territory. For this turn, have uh, Heinrich continue going for go for the replenishment, and then for your secondary general, just have him be in range of Eschen. Go and give yourself some slightly better units for your main army, because you'll need slightly better troops to take on the garrison at Waldenhof. As for buildings, you could go ahead and go for tier 2 settlements right off the bat. It's a good call. With Since we have a barracks in Eschen, we don't need the one in our main capital. There's a, There are better, better buildings for tier 4, tier 4 and tier 5 buildings we can build instead of a, just a tier 3 barracks. With your main army, you you could do the quest battle, but I strongly suggest not doing the, the quest battle until you get Manfred von Kastein. Because what's really annoying in that battle is uh, you make it'll make it a lot easier if you get Manfred use his um, spirit leech on the enemy general. Heinrich, you have to focus. Your army has to essentially beat the enemy's army, and at this early game, I honestly say it's not worth it. Not yet. With your small support army and your main army, you could easily beat the garrison, the crypt ghouls. You can auto this. You don't have to play the battle. But later on, you're gonna you're gonna have to play more battles because you don't want to lose the hex rights because they're they're a pretty valuable unit, and when you're going up against the humans, just because of that terror, the terror doesn't really matter against vampires. I would also suggest like not sacking the uh, the villages in eastern Sylvania because you can get some pretty good buildings. Now you could it, it just depends what your strategy is. With your secondary army, raise the dead and garrison and Eschen as quickly as possible. If the AI sees that you completely abandon Eschen to go to focus all your units up to Waldenhof, th that gar that army in Castle Drakenhof or Tempelhof will come at you. They will come at you. They will come at you at force. Stu they might even raise the city to the ground, and they might impede your progress substantially. Go ahead and get the Binding Circle building. That is a very... It's a very costly building, but it's a building that should be in Castle Dragonhof. So you, you could then focus on getting Hex Wraiths or White Kings in the future. And do the quest line for Heinrich Kemmler. Tempelhof is going to continue building its, its forces at at its castle, but uh, we need to stop that immediately. Unfortunately, the main army cannot actually reach from Waldenhof to Castle Tempelhof. So what you're going to do, essentially, is use your secondary army to, s to basically siege. Now, there's no way they can win, but the only thing is we're, st we're only trying to stop troop production from growing anymore. They will completely... they would lose, but... Um, We'll then bring our forces from Waltenhof to reinforce our guys at the siege. Now since it's uh, not our legendary lord, it will take two turns to build a uh, battering ram. But uh, time's on our side. This is the only army that Templehof has. And once you eliminate that, it's essentially game, game over for Templehof. Go ahead and continue building building more troops from Raised Dead. You could decide whether or not you want to go with more economic buildings or garrisons. I would su suggest getting some economics because essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building two stacks. One stack to attack Essen to the north in Ostermark and one stack to attack Sterland to the west. If you can raise that, try. If you don't have it, oh well. We have a like a 60% chance to win, so 
you can easily just auto it. You could play these battles for better results, but it, essentially it's your choice. This is essentially for uh, starter guide tutorial purposes. As for sacking and occupying, Western Sylvania, honestly, you can sack. Get that extra money. Because it doesn't really matter, like, this area essentially doesn't matter too much. You can sack, then occupy, and you should be just fine. You'll have a tier 1 building, but most of the time when you do, like, occupy, like, new settlements and stuff, you'll, you're, it's gonna bring it all down one level anyway. So you might as well get away with some money. And this quickly, you can wipe out Temple off right off the bat. I wouldn't strongly suggest not trying to subjugate or make vassals in uh, Total War Warhammer. They have a tendency to backstab you quite often. And if they go to war, and if someone like someone else declares war on them, you get war on you. So it's just, it just isn't worth it, honestly. Everybody already hates you since you are vampires, so. Don't ex I wouldn't even bother with the diplomacy tab unless you are like about to eliminate an enemy and they like want peace and they give you money. At Castle Drakenhof, you can decide whether or not you want to exp you want higher level buildings or get upgrade the mine. I strongly suggest upgrading the mine first because that it just gives you an immense amount of money to support more stacks. With uh, Western Sylvania and almost secure we could essentially take that stack that we have up at the fort and that secondary army and we could bring them both down to Schwarzwerfen. With one and a half stacks we can easily just take over that territory and secure both western and eastern Sylvania which then gives us the choice to spawn in the, le the other legendary lord Manfred von Kostein. I wouldn't focus, uh, the, the, the only buildings I would honestly focus on for the Vampire Counts in Western Sylvania is growth. Go ahead and like expand growth, but uh, be vigilant with the uh, enemies on your borders, the humans. They will start, they will declare war soon and uh, focusing your, building these two stacks is securing Sylvania is extremely crucial in this early game stage. If both your armies next to this river, you won't have any diplomatic penalties. But there is a very strange thing that happens here, and this has happened. It's happened with three legendary campaign tests I've done with the vampire counts. Schwarzorfen, for some reason, likes to take its only stack and then attack the dwarfs in the mountains. You can use this to your advantage, with no army guarding Schwarzorfen. I mean, your two, your two stacks, maybe one and a half, maybe two stacks can easily take over Schwarzwerfen, no problem. Even if there was the stack inside Schwarzwerfen, your two stacks would essentially win. So there's no problem, you have nothing stopping you. Find me, essentially what you're doing is like a Blitzkrieg test strategy and just expanding very fast, very quickly, and you can take over everything. You shouldn't have a big problem with public order in western Sylvania because just because of the vampire corruption is like dominant in the land. You could decide which general you want to use but uh, in this situation I chose to use a secondary general instead of Heinrich because Heinrich I'm gonna send him straight towards them to secure that territory early. I could have sacked it, could have um, I honestly should have sacked Schwarzwerfen because the only thing it would have is it would have another barracks. If that army, Sch Schwarzwerfen army in the dwarves is going to be an issue, you have a stack guarding Schwarzwerfen, so it should be a problem. With Heimrich, you're going to focus him on just attacking the moot as soon as possible. Doing this will give you quite a significant advantage as well, because what we're doing is we're essentially we're going to take over the moot, and we're not going to raid it. We're going to keep control of it. Just temporary, just showing you right up here that you can summon von Manfred von Kostein here. Just one more turn away. But uh, what we're essentially doing with Heinrich, we'll take over the moot and we'll occupy it. And we'll, on purpose, we're going to spawn in rebellions. 
We're actually like like leave leave the city and just like let the rebellion spawn faster. You have like a a ridiculous number of like negative public order happening, and that's essentially what you want. You'll keep destroying these armies, and you can actually and you will have to play the battles. I wouldn't suggest autoing them. You can auto them when they first spawn. You'll take some casualties. But I would strongly suggest, like, actually fighting the bat. Let let the rebellions grow, and then use your stack to destroy the enemy's re rebellion stack. You can then summon, like, the more dead there are, you can actually summon better, like, raise better dead units in the area. And not to mention that you can quell the rebellion and level up your generals, both Heinrich and Manfred. If you get them to to a high, like if you continue leveling down down the leadership tree, you can have the vampire corruption spread faster in these regions, and you can lower the raised dead cost. So you don't even need to even build like high tier buildings to get like the vargals, the terror guys, the lances for your horsemen and all that. You don't even need any of that. You can essentially just focus on just raising the dead with Heinrichs minus fifty percent discount for faction you could then just focus leadership get that another minus 15 15 percent and you just profit you might even get some followers that can also lower the cost as well to help ensure you have complete and utter yeah. cheap units cheap powerful units for your campaign now whether or not you want to expand you essentially have a choice in where to expand in this uh, playthrough I chose to to attack the Moot, and I also chose to attack Essen, just north of me. Now, this is for a, like th this is this tutorial is essentially focused entirely on a starter section, the starter guide. But if you want to know what what I would suggest are the best places to fight, like for example the forces of chaos, I would strongly suggest fortifying and taking over Ostermark and taking over the castle of Beckafen. There is a natural defense barrier, river, just bordering Ostermark and Kislev, and Beckafen is a castle in a very strategic location. The Hordes of Chaos will come down the wastelands, and they will get close to Beckafen. And your best place to make like a final stand, like a good strong stand against the Force of Chaos is Beckafen. Use the gear, build up the garrison Beckafen, and you can have a very powerful army. Focus like maybe I would suggest maybe like two undead stacks. You can use Manfred von Kastein. Using Manfred von Kastein is, would be per, I would I would suggest doing that. As for Heinrich, you can continue expanding west if you can, but as not as not completely your choice. Do you have to build? Do you have to expand? No, but. Um, I would strongly suggest going down the economic tree early game to increase your vampire corruption as fast as possible, level up your generals by just slaughtering rebellions like every couple of turns, and you can get yourself a lot of dark magic to help help your finances and building more and more stacks to deal with the enemy. And yeah, I believe that is all. That, that concludes for the uh, starter tutorial for the Vampire counts. Do keep in mind that this can work. Also, this is essentially like legendary focused, but you could this these strategies and tips can also work for lower difficulties as well. No matter if you're playing on very hard, hard or normal, just keep in mind that you're gonna have a lot less uh, negative public order to make those rebellions spawn very quickly. That's the only that's the only backdraw if you play on the easier difficulty. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, starter guide. I'll see you next time.